Hello and welcome back to episode five of this series about teaching maths to classes of children who are four or four to five year olds. This episode is all about teaching of number in the third half term. I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady and I'm here to help you love your maths teaching. If you're a feisty teacher who likes to think for themselves but likes to be challenged then this series is definitely for you. In this episode we'll be looking at checking your established routines are securely in place. We'll be looking at the 10 aspects of the numbers you're going to focus on this half term, which are likely to be the numbers 9 to 11. Don't worry if you haven't got that far. It's more important to do numbers thoroughly than to race ahead. But some people might get that far. And we'll focus on the aspects of those 10 features of number that are new this half term. So on going past 10 and we'll do a bit more work on 10 frames and then we'll work on articulation and making sure every child is thinking for themselves in a whole class situation, which is such an important part of maths and now's an appropriate time to establish it carefully. So general checks very quickly. Have you still got your daily routines in place that are going to make sure that children learn to count up to 20 and down from 20 by the end of the year? We've talked about them before but need to check that the children are moving on through that journey all through the year. They've got to have those number strings as earworms because they are illogical and they just need to be known. So the 10 aspects of the numbers 9 to 11 that we need to focus on. First of all, children need to be able to count that many objects. Think about at this stage of the year, can we make it as active as possible? Can they be bouncing? Can they be running around the hall? Anything like that, just anything that will make them really concentrate on learning to count to those numbers. And of course, it's great if children are active, they're switched on, it's great for their health. Secondly, we talked about representing number those numbers with fingers. And now, when we get past 10, how are we going to represent number 11 in this way? Well, the point of representing numbers with fingers is to use the fives and extra structure. So we've gone from six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I need to know that that's ten, obviously, or with one missing is nine. Quite difficult to do. Lots of work needed on that. So how do we manage eleven? Well, eleven is that next to your feet. And I can't get my feet in, <laughs> in shot, my hiking boots on. But of course, if the children are sitting on the mat, they can easily place one finger next to their feet. So you can have great fun taking shoes and socks off, allow plenty of time and counting the toes and making sure that there are 10 and that this all makes sense to do the next number with all 10 toes and one finger. And this is going to take them through a long way. In England, we've got a particular problem. Our children have to do exams at the age of six and certain politicians thought it'd be a really good idea if they weren't allowed any apparatus to help them. This, of course, is nonsense. Please don't copy what's going on in England. It's just extraordinary and it should never have come to exist. But if you're in that situation, then you should remember that no politician has ever yet thought to get rid of children's fingers and toes. So the use of fingers and toes is really, really great. And it's the perfect structure of fives and extras. So we can really work on developing how we show number 11 with fingers and toes. And it is just one finger next to your feet, which is fine when you're small and you're sitting on the floor. So number three on the list is instantly representing the number with another fives and extras representation. So you can use a rake and rake, which I showed you last time. You might want to use your coat hanger. Coat hanger's great. You see that's number 11. I mentioned last time the 10 frame. Now you may have 10 frames that you can fit counters into. You may have printed sheets. Just wanna go through the basics of the 10 frame. I believe in cheap apparatus. So here is my 10 frame. Happy eggs make me happy because they come in boxes of 10. And just not to be brand specific, so do these medium Scottish eggs. And big and fresh eggs, they come in 10s as well. So I always buy my eggs in 10s. So the structure of the 10 frame, there we go, I use my egg box and my two-sided counters. The key thing is that you build the numbers upwards. 
so that's a two. It doesn't go across like Numicon. It's one of the reasons why there's a Numicon isn't perfect because it's showing a structure that's not as efficient as the structure of fives and extras. Lots of advantages to Numicon. Might talk about that another time, but this is a problem. So three, that's going to be your number three. Four, there's a four. And that's a five. So five goes up, it never goes across until that column is full. The six, so it's clearly showing that the six is a five and a one. That's what I mean by fives and extras. Your seven, your eight, and your nine. And then 10 is a full box. And for 11, you'll need to bring in a second box. So 11 would be that. And the great thing about your 10 frame, if you're doing it with two sided counters, if we go back and look, say, at the number nine. So when you're talking about partitioning the number, you can simply, if you're using two sided counters, you can turn over different numbers of counters. And that shows your, you your partitioning within that structure, which is a really powerful way to show it. So the rest are just the same as before. Children need to learn to say the number. If you show them that many objects, can they say those numbers, nine, 10, and 11? They need to hear the number and represent it and show it to you. There may well be problems with hearing. They need to learn to read the digit. The communication for all number cards is still great. As you move on to numbers like 11, make sure you're still chanting the rhyme for constructing the number one. They need to be able to read those numbers, we're getting beyond digits now onto numbers. They need to explore the meaning of the number in their world. They need to do one more and one less and see those numbers, use apparatus all the time, individual objects, objects in the structures of fives and extras, fingers and toes. And they need to partition that number. And again, keep with the structures as much as you can. There's a time and a place for using individual objects. There must also be times and places for partitioning within those structures. And as I showed you before, if you've got two sided counters and a 10 frame, you're away with a really clear representation. So as ever, you should be building your number walls for each number. I mean, we're allowing about two weeks on each number, plenty of time to build a number wall that expresses all those things we've just discussed. And then you can be confident your children are going to get a really good understanding of each number as you go along. Now, I mentioned articulation. Articulation is about some people would think it's about children chanting definitions. For me, it's definitely not. It's about every child being able to listen to what's going on in their own mind and explain it. I want to show you a classic way of getting going with that, with, with whole class articulation at this stage. So here's a type of whole class question that you can introduce that will get every child thinking for themselves and valuing their own opinion, if you work at it for a while. So we go back to our egg box, and this time I'm going to play around with the arrangements of counters and not just follow the fives and extras 10 frame structure. So I'm simply gonna open the box and ask the children to count them and remember how they counted them. Not just interested in the answer, I'm interested in every child explaining how they did it. So in the early days, you can open them. And if you use lolly sticks with children's names on, how to select them unpredictably, randomly and fairly, then you can pick out a lolly stick, pick a child and say, how many counters are there? But how did you count them? And of course, a lot of children at this stage will have counted them one at a time but they will have counted them in different orders. And that gives you the kind of variety that we're looking at at this stage. And they become aware that there's different ways of doing it and that it's fine and that their way matters. But some children will begin to group them. So they might see the five and the two and say, it's seven because it was a five and a two. Or they might see the five and then go six, seven. And if you simply change the angle, they often see them differently. So some now might see a four 
five, six, seven, a four in the square, and then count on the extra ones. All of this is great. Try to create a climate in which if a child gets the answer wrong, it's irrelevant because you go straight on to, well, how did you do it? And when they get into their method, they just normally unpack their own mistakes anyway, and they become irrelevant. So every child has a voice, every child's opinion matters, every child is doing maths for themselves, and you're setting up a growth mindset at this age. So that's a very brief overview of the essence of teaching number well in the third half term. You don't have to do it this way, but hopefully some of the things I've said will stimulate you to think and encourage you to reflect on what you're doing and challenge you to see, are you doing it to a standard you're completely happy with or is there anything that you should modify? If you value what I'm doing here, please recommend it to other people, encourage them to watch it. Please like the video, please comment in it, particularly on YouTube, but also in groups. If you share it to groups, that's really helpful. Other people will get a chance to see this. It's all done for the love of it by me. And I've got to find the energy to keep going because it's a lot of work, but there's a lot still to cover across the whole of primary maths and special needs and everything as well. In the next episode, episode six, we're going to look at the teaching of fraction in the first half of the year. And then in episode seven, we'll come back to number in the fourth half term. And we'll be looking in particular at doubles and halves and how we integrate them into teaching. I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady, hoping that I can help you love your maths teaching and really be able to ensure that every child learns maths thoroughly, with fluency and with deep understanding, fully for mastery. Have a great day.